Right, so levees and floodplains. Again, these two, a bit like oxbow lakes and meanders, go hand in hand. Um, so it's worth teaching them together and accepting that they're kind of both happening in the same places. Um, so levees and floodplains um, are, again, erosional and depositional features. They have both different sets of things. Um, levees are, I guess, a bit more depositional and floodplains are a little bit more erosional. But again, they have their features of both. Uh, and both of these would happen in the kind of middle to lower sections of the river. And we tend to find um, the, the biggest floodplains where we have meandering rivers. Um, so we're going to start off um, with floodplains, I think, um, and then we'll go on to levees afterwards. Um, so imagine you've got, we're doing it in, in a cross-sectional view. Um, there we go. So if you were to look at a floodplain on a map, for example, you just see quite a large flat area. Well, you wouldn't see very much with um, a river in the bottom somewhere. Um, we just talked about meanders and we said that meanders move over time. So they go from being quite straight to really, really, really meandering. Then you get oxbow lakes and cutoffs. So meanders, as they work their way through a landscape, they kind of cut quite um, a large section. They erode a large section um, of, of land. Um, and that then forms essentially your your floodplain kind of boundaries, if you like. So meanders will have gone all the way up to this edge and way up to this edge, kind of laterally eroding um, at some point, um, cutting this kind of quite big, quite flat area. Um, then what happens is that then leaves a nice cut out area for the river to actually flood during times of high water. Um, so here's your river in the bottom. Obviously, if we get a sudden influx of water, your river is going to overflow its banks and it's able to flood the floodplain up until um, these sort of sections either side where our meanders have never cut past. We call these river bluffs. No idea why bluffs just is. Um, so that is what our floodplain essentially looks like. There's not much more to it than that. Um, the, the reason we like to be able to identify where floodplains are is because these would seem like a good place to come and settle and build homes because you've got a fresh source of water. When the river floods, that takes all the sediment from the bottom of the river during times of flood and it puts it on the riverbanks, which makes the, makes this, this area here, the floodplain, really nice and fertile. It's got loads of nutrients constantly coming in year on year as the river floods. So it'll be tempting to build your house over here and to um, start to um, grow crops and stuff over here. The problem is, one, it's nice and fertile soil. Yes, good place, fresh source of water, good place to live maybe, but you're always gonna have this problem of the river flooding, which is why as you get older, now you know this, don't ever buy a house on a floodplain because naturally a floodplain is there to flood. It's a whole natural part um, of this system. Um, so they're not good places to live, therefore always try and avoid floodplains if you're looking to build new houses, for example. Um, however, it doesn't always necessarily have to be that bad, um, which comes into what we're talking about in terms of levees. So as we said, the river will flood periodically and flood onto the floodplain. Um, and as we said, it takes with it sediment and it leaves it on the floodplain, making it nice and fertile but it doesn't always necessarily spread itself out across the whole floodplain. What it actually does is it will build up, first and foremost, either side of the river. So you might only get a small flood. So this bit might be safe over here, but this bit might flood. So what happens is all your bits of sediment and stuff will get deposited over here. And bits will be deposited over here, but it will get less and less the further back into the floodplain you go. And you end up building up your riverbanks to look a bit like that. Um, so a river, a floodplain will never be completely flat. It will have these, what we call levees either side. So I said these go hand in hand. Um, and levees as a feature are like a natural river flood defence. Um, what people often then do, uh, if they are settling over here, um, as we have done very stupidly in the UK for many, many years, settled on floodplains, is that actually people will go in and reinforce these levees and make them higher to try and protect the people behind um, who live on this floodplain. Um, so levees are a natural um, sort of river 
um, engineering solution, but we can also kind of make them man-made levees too. And, and we talked about these when we talked about the Hurricane Katrina floods um, because the River Mississippi um, travelled through New Orleans, a bit of revision, um, and um, people had gone and reinforced the levees, but do you remember some of them broke and then all the waters from the river then came flooding into New Orleans. Um, but they're quite a good form of protection for, for most towns and cities living on floodplains. Um, notice that I drew them in a certain way. So I drew some, I drew some bigger pebbles and bits of sediment here and smaller bits going a bit further back, um, which is again, what, exactly what you'll find. And if you have a look in the, in the textbook, you'll find that too. Um, so we get the bigger sediment closer to the river and smaller sediment a bit further away. And that's just simply the laws of physics. Um, the water will be able to carry smaller bits of sediment um, in the lower flows over here where there's a bit more friction where there's a bit more friction um, and then the bigger stuff because it's quite hard to move it won't be able to be moved as far so when the river floods it tends to get deposited closer to the actual river and the smaller stuff's able to travel a little bit further where perhaps less energy is um, other than that there aren't many more things to say about levees and floodplains they are they're quite nice um, I'm just making sure that I've actually um, put everything on there that the textbook says um, obviously in the diagrams of the textbooks you might want to use those ones they're a bit better than mine this time um, but there is some sediment at the bottom of the river too um, which I forgot to add in here um, and then of course there'll be deposits all the way across sorry it's about to sneeze uh, all the way across the floodplain as well so the diagrams in the book perhaps do this a bit more justice um, the, the name we give to the sediment that comes out of the river as well, I forgot that one, um, we, we've got a couple of names um, for it, um, so all of this, um, there's some really posh words, so you can either refer to it as alluvium, alluvi, oh, no, hang on, alluvium, or they sometimes call it alluvial sediment. Um, alluvial is a name for a river sediment in particular, so you can't use that term for coasts or anything, it is just a river's term. Um, or if you want a simpler term, so pathway three and four perhaps, um, you can use the, the term silt. So most of the sediment in a river will be termed silt, and that's a, a quite a small sized particle. That's, that's the stuff that makes your river turn like a brownie colour, if that makes sense. Um, so use one of those three terms as well. Um, but this is the stuff that makes your land really fertile. So if you add silt or alluvium or alluvial sediment to your soil, you make it nice and fertile. Um, that's about it. Have a little look at the textbook pages too, because there's a nice OS map of what a um, floodplain will look like on a map. Uh, they could well in the exam give you an OS map and get you to find some river features. So get you to t say exactly where a meander was or where it's likely there's a floodplain. Um, so just go and have a quick look at that. It's the bottom of page 161 and I've put all those photos attached to the um, assignment anyway. Uh, and that's the last video. So I'm going to let you do estuaries on your own. There's a nice big case study double page, um, again, which I've added about the River Severn and its estuary. Um, it's a bit more simple. There's not much of a process to that one. So I think you can probably manage that one on your own without a video. Uh, any questions, as always, give me a shout.